Um, it is, it's a movie star home. And so is this lake. Uh, the home was shown near the beginning of the 1985 motion picture Daryl, which was also, who also used this lake across the street for the splashdown scene. So, D-A-R-Y-L got between each of those, 1985 movie featured this. The Smith. It was later occupied by Harold Warren, a colorful member of Orlando's English colony, who died in 1958 at the age of 104. Wow. And that's 104. The street is the car house. Anybody recognize the name Bob Carr? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mayor Bob Carr? Yep. This home was built in about 1910, and for a time it was the residence of Mayor Bob Carr, who remodeled it extensively. It has a gable roof with a rear slope extending to form a salt box or cat's slide roof. So, cats can slide off that roof. This is the whole family that. Oh, the whole family live on this. Yeah. to be a Dutch colonial home with a Swedish gambrel roof built in 1910 for Nanny Cahoon. This house is the Dupree house um, and it is a tea plan house built in 1894. The decorative eave brackets are uh, its calling card. So, 505, the second home there, is the Waldron House. And the bungalow was built in 1913 and with an unusual gable and cross gable roof and a porch that was later enclosed. It was the home of R.J. Waldron. cottage with a steep gabled roof was built in 1912 and was the home of I.A. Trainer. A small garage with a Jenkin head roof is built in the rear. The little house over here, the cute little entranceway, is um, the Holbrook house. In 1910, this was the home of John Holbrook, who moved from Kentucky to Orlando in 1908. He served as secretary and treasurer of the Automobile Club and, won, and was one of the 75 Orlandoans who were known as the Good Roads Boosters. He was the first Ford dealer between Jacksonville and Tampa. Holbrook also established one of the state's largest citrus globes and an exclusive residential development along Lake Adair. It's a uh, two-story red brick colonial revival built in 1925 with a slate-covered gabled roof. It was the residence of Julian Howard, a prosperous auto dealer.
1922 and features windows with a Moorish design. It was the home of Perry Temple, the widow of the man after whom the Temple Orange was named. Really? Oh. on pasture land which now is a subdivision known as Lancaster Park. So this is where the cattle um, were grazing. This neighborhood was developed in the 1920s near what was at that time the city's southeastern border. On the southeastern border of Orlando right now. The many large oak trees that lined the roads were planted years before. These entrance gates were built with a Mediterranean style before the end of the 1920s. Development began in earnest in 1926 and essentially halted when the financial crash of 1929. It was not completed until the 1950s. 1960? Wow. At the age of 40, she was the youngest person ever to serve as Orlando's mayor. She was re-elected re twice, served as the Orlando's 31st mayor until she resigned to serve as the Florida Secretary of State in 2003. She also served as chairman of the Florida and National League of Cities. So Glenda Hood. Glenda Hood. Is she still here? No. Served in the Confederate Army and graduated from Missouri Medical College when he arrived in Orlando in 1890. The following year, he bought a lot on the northeast corner of Jackson and Magnolia and built this large house and lived in it for 16 years. It was later to, sold to Marcel, Marcellus Moss who in 1941 moved it to this location. Hello. The wood frame home is dominated by the imposing portico supported by the iconic columns. Classic revival style. I know. Yeah.